Well, the sun is set in the west, and the lights of Las Vegas are on the strip right now. They've come to life, and so is World Championship Boxing, where Mayweather Promotions and Golden Boy Promotions, along with the MGM Grand Garden Hotel and Casino, have all come together for this show called Ring Kings. It's time for our main event of the evening, and it is the 12-round WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World as Floyd Mayweather Jr., 42-0 with 26 knockouts, takes on the reigning champion in this division, Miguel Cotto of Caguas, Puerto Rico, who comes in here 37-2 with 30 knockouts. For the countries that have just joined us, we welcome you. For the countries that have been with us throughout the evening, welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello again, everybody. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Montempo. Dave, it's been interesting so far, but the excitement is really just about to begin. That's right, Mayweather and Cotto, the bill of fare, the source of excitement all the way throughout town and in this hotel all week. And the goosebumps are starting to occur. Celebrities here, Tommy the Hitman Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. First fight I ever did in the desert, 1981. Those two guys, Jim Brown, running back great. Jim did a couple of fights with me uh, telecast uh, years ago. There's my pal Mike Tyson. Mike looking good. That is one man show, which was very successful here at the MGM. Mike, uh, I don't think I ever any happier. A lot of credit goes to his wife, Keith. It's Michael Buffer. Right for the Puerto Rican anthem. La tierra de Borinque, donde he nacido yo, es un jardín florido de mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido, le sirve de dosel y dan arrullos plácidos. Las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó con un exclamo lleno de admiración. Esta es la linda tierra que busco yo. Es Borinquen la hija, la hija del mar y el sol, del mar. Beautiful anthem of the island of Puerto Rico. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem for the United States of America, please welcome Philadelphia's own, by way of Liverpool, England, six-time Grammy nominee, RCA recording artist, Marsha Ambrosia.
Well, that gets the hearts going of the people in attendance here. What a beautiful, beautiful city. You know, there was a very interesting stare down the way in yesterday, and here it is, Dave. We were there. Yeah, Mayweather trying to draw with Cotto. Right in his face, they've been most respectful to each other, and Cotto maintained that. And this is Floyd trying to juice it up a little bit. Every time his photograph is shown here in the arena, the crowd boos, and this is his home town. I mean, he's from Flint, Michigan, but uh, he's still a uh, Las Vegas for many, many years. And they have those stare down contests when you're a kid. Who can go the longest without laughing? That's what Cotto had to do there. All right, taking a look at the tail of the tape of the metric system, it'll tell us a few things, and a lot of it favors Miguel Cotto. The height, for instance, is exactly the same. The weight, uh, three pounds advantage for Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto is four years younger, but Floyd Mayweather has a five-inch advantage in reach. The rules under which this will be contested, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and the fight cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So the stage is just about set. Floyd Mayweather is the challenger, so he'll be making his way out momentarily to the announcement of Michael Buffer. The crowd just beginning to see him on the monitors here as he's still underneath the stands. But this kid, I mean, he's just unflappable. You're looking at one of the best fighters in the world today, maybe one of the best fighters in the history of boxing. Floyd Mayweather. Little junior rock star Justin Bieber with Mayweather. So Mayweather surrounding himself with quite a posse, as always he does. Here's Michael. Seven time world champion Floyd. Money. Mayweather. Floyd coming in, chewing that gum. He calls himself Money with Mayweather. And the crowd hates to hear that term, Money Mayweather. Remember, Mayweather is coming up in weight. And Dave, what's that mean for this fight that he's coming up in weight? Well, he is in Cotto's territory, so he hopes to bring the speed up there with him. And it should give him a little bit more power. He's also facing a more powerful opponent. 151 was the highest that he weighed in at. And the significance, at 154, he had some trouble with Astro de la Hoya a few years back. So this is the way class where they have to ask about if the guy in the first round is trying to chip at 130. Does he push it too high when he goes up to 154? Now we're fine, that's what this is all about. This kid has won seven world titles in five weight divisions. This should be an eighth world title tonight. Strengths, as you know, is speed, hand speed, great counter puncher. One of the best ever defensive fighters. Very quick with his hands and legs. Very smart boxer, great, great condition. He is 35 years of age. Somebody asked me a long time ago, and a short time ago, what about when does the first fight begin to show that he's losing it? I still think this kid is in his prime. You take a look at his body, folks. When he takes his shirt off, he is absolutely cut. He's put his time in in the ring. He's in magnificent, magnificent condition. And Father Time doesn't send an advance team. You really never know when that moment's going to sneak up on you to talk to the point that you are making. But he is always in terrific condition. But he comes in in what looks like a, a beautiful, beautiful outfit. And I'm sure it costs a fortune, but it's leather. And that's going to be heavy when it gets wet. You don't want to give any edge, you might get uh, opinion to Miguel Cotto. Because this guy's a great fighter, too. Miguel Cotto, 37-2. 30 knockouts from Caguas, Puerto Rico. And you'll see if he can do anything offensively against this guy, that he's going to be a very, very favorite champion here in Las Vegas. I mean, the Mexicans who have a brutal fights with the Puerto Ricans are all rooting for this Puerto Rican on this given night. And I do sense that if Cotto's going to make a big impact or have the fight of his life, 
lot will be determined early. You have to make some early noise on Mayweather. Well, and I think I think that this guy is definitely going to put pressure and try to get pressure on Mayweather and keep pressure on him. And as long as he can do that, he can be in the fight. But again, when you're talking about Floyd, you're talking about one of the best ever. This is a very, very, very good champion fighter. Again, I love the look of Floyd Mayweather's leather trunks, but I don't think it's a smart decision to come in here if this fight goes uh, in the 9, 10, 11, 12 rounds and how heavy they're going to be with sweat, perspiration, and water uh, during the course of this fight. But he does the unorthodox things. So Michael Buffer just making the announcement of Miguel Cotto. Cotto's only losses were at the hands of Manny Pacquiao by a 12-round TKO. And the only other loss was to Antonio Margarito in less than honorable conditions with that love situation. Since then, he's had three knockouts in a row. He won another title from Yuri Foreman by ninth round TKO in the WBA 154-pound championship. Then he defended that against Ricardo Mayorga in March last year. And then in December, he finally got his revenge against Antonio Margarito in the 10th round in New York City. His strength, power, very smart in the ring, Relentless pressure, aggressive style, good movement. He's an accurate puncher. And he's very poised in the ring, which he'll have to be tonight against this kid. All right, so the stage is just about set. They're playing the ring, and Dave, the anticipation of this height is absolutely enough. Here's Michael Bob. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Mayweather Promotions. Golden Boy Promotions and Miguel Cotto Promotions are proud to present with dedication to the memory of Bert Randolph Sugar. The main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World and the vacant WBC Diamond Belt Championship. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina, AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network, AT&T, rethink possible, O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Don't miss Hatfields and McCoy's own history, the feud begins Memorial Day, 9 p.m., 8 central only on history. DeWalt Power Tools and their 20-volt brushless technology, they are guaranteed tough. And Puebla, Cinco de Mayo, Viva Puebla, Viva Cinco de Mayo, Viva Mexico. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Skip Avanzino, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, the World Boxing Association President Gilberto Mendoza Sr., WBC President Jose Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges scoring on the 10-point system, Robert Hoyle. Patricia Morse Jarman and Dave Moretti and inside the ring in charge of the action at the bell referee Tony Weeks and now the officials are ready the fighters are ready and millions upon millions of fans around the world courtesy of HBO pay-per-view are ready from the MGM Grand, Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner with trainer Roger Mayweather, wearing black, officially weighing 151 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 42 fights, 42 victories, including 26 knockouts, with seven world titles in five divisions. Tonight, he challenges for number eight. From Grand Rapids, Michigan, former junior lightweight, world champion, 
Former lightweight world champion. Former super lightweight world champion. Three-time welterweight world champion and former super welterweight champion of the world. Lord Money. Seven victories, including 30 knockouts, and only two defeats, with four world championships in three divisions. He is the former light welterweight world champion, two-time welterweight world champion, and reigning defending. Okay, gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Usted received your instructions. Okay, look, if it goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. If it goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. I want a good, clean fight. You know how I play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escúchame, cuídate, listos? Let's go. Vámonos. Go. All right, so they're set to go. Miguel Cotto, the former WBO 147-pound champ and the reigning 154-pound champion. He's had four world championships as Miguel Cotto. All right, here we go. Floyd May with a decked out in red leather trunks with white trim. Cotto going to press him right from the get-go. Big number to keep in mind, the five-inch reach advantage for Floyd Mayweather. He has made that look a lot more in his fights. A guy who will pay attention to the punch percentages tonight when we're given them. He has held so many opponents under 20% landed their punch. So he is a superior defensive fighter. You see the shoulder roll, you see him spin off. He's able to spin from offense to defense and back better than just about anybody ever has done. Now Miguel trying to go for the head. Now Floyd ties him up, but he takes time. Really light the shots off the hands. Wearing eight ounce uh, championship gloves now. That's a little something different for Floyd, too, but he said he didn't care if they weighed a pound. I can still beat this guy. Look at the considerable hand speed of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, the kid is just an extraordinary fighter. How about that trailing right hand that just missed? Double jab to the body. He moved to the left and fired a trip. Hands free. Right Miles Lee. You know, Dave, a lot of times you wonder how this guy has such a great extension to his punches. Look how he turns his shoulder. Look at the way he's going to make Koto miss coming in. The shoulder roll. Talking about it. The master of that. And then he's able to shift. When we talked about it in some earlier fights. Guys that have things that can't be taught. And Mayweather does in terms of his reactions. Going from defense to offense. Both of these in great shape with the more and more oh. crisp and more accurate punches. Stop, stop, so stop, stop, stop. By Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> Uppercut on the inside by the Floyd. Hole, the hole. Hands free, hands free. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> There's that quick uppercut by Mayweather. Start 
kicks out as a jab from that position, and then he throws a leaping uppercut, and then he's fast enough to get out of the way before being hit with a counter. Alcona gets a chopping shot in there, but Floyd really looks like, you know, he's, he's really commanding things. They both jump in together, nobody throws a punch, and Floyd jumps up, gets off the left hook, stands downstairs, catches him underneath the right elbow, bangs him with the right hand, upstairs to the back of the head. Floyd sets up again. Cody comes in but doesn't land anything. This guy is sensational as the Mayweather. He's so high to him. Ten nine Mayweather in the first round. against the defensive tactics of Floyd Mayweather in the red trunks. And he tempted fate by allowing Cotto to fire an uppercut at him on the inside. And then he's trying to turn to get the damage in here. And he is doing the damage. He landed the uppercut, barring to keep Cotto off of him. And he bends over to his right, always to his right side. And then at any time, if Cotto could pick that up, is a oh, really cracked with the right hand. Floyd sometimes will drop the left hand, but usually on the inside he's thrown so much, he can't get a clean shot at this guy. And it's got to be frustrating for Miguel Cotto. That ends the second round, and again, I just think Mayweather just outboxed again. Para no te los 
Me mete los codos antes y lo empuja y trabaja tú. Ahí, vamos allá, campeón, vamos a subir ahora. Empezar a subir más activo, suéltate más. Si te sientes tenso, te vas atrás, mueve la pierna y ve con lo tuyo y tú eres un sol. From the last round, Mayweather, the jab and the right hand. See him pawing and then the right hand again, then the uppercut just missed. And then a nice, solid right hand. That's an exquisite six-punch combination for a guy that was trapped. Remember, he was in the corner just before he did That's right, we're coming up to the third round. Things are looking tough right now for Miguel. I'll tell you another thing he can't do, you know, he just lingers there in what we call a kill zone or the hit zone. And you can't do that with Mayweather because he sees it. He is so sharp and so quick mentally in the ring that he will nail you. And he did that at the replay, showed that terrifically. Well, here we are in the third round. It's scheduled for 12. So far, Cotto hasn't done much offensively. He started first, but then in the first round, as the cheers go up for Cotto, and Cotto to try to inspire him, it really just inspires Mayweather even more when they consider him the bad boy, which he really isn't, folks. He's always near as bad as he portrayed. He likes to play that role because he knows from the promotional aspect he has to. And look at that on the offside. He basically threw it with a southpaw with throw, the right cross there as he squared himself up. Hey, he's got just enough power to keep a guy off balance. He's not a particularly big banger, but Floyd has got enough power to keep his opponent off balance all the time. Off the cut, inside. He's standing straight up right now, and Cotto still can't get to him. Floyd shakes his head down. How frustrating is it to fight this guy? I mean, I thought it was going to be a different fight than all together. I thought Cotto was going to be able to land something. He can't get any power shots in this guy's hand. Nothing. He's throwing those big left tucks in there. He's being caught in the gloves of Mayweather. You're talking about Cotto missing by two inches. I mean, we're not talking about wild missing. Oh, no, no. Just behind. Well, if you're a big puncher and you want to send your punches to a place to have a nap, in the pillows of the hands of Floyd Mayweather is a place you can take a nap with your hands. Because this guy catches a lot of big punches. Look at that. Overhand right as Cotto came in, bang, with the right hand goes Floyd Mayweather. That is phenomenal. He's basically throwing what amounts to be right hand lead from the right hand style. And he gets away with it because he is so quick. Yeah, I mean, ordinarily a guy would be so exposed. I mean, he, he carries his left hand low as he is right now. Cotto really doesn't see it, though. He caught him with a glancing right hand row that time. Mayweather looking and dictating. He's so bright in the ring. And that's the thing that people forget. This guy knows what he's doing. The fact that I realized when I saw him come in in the leather pants doesn't even phase him. Modest leaders, modest leaders. He didn't care if they make you heavy. He thinks that a guy who's uh, 31 years old, four years younger than he is, is older than he is. Stop, 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 stop. Round three about to go into the books. Another good round for Floyd Mayweather Jr. Just doing a nice job. 10-9 rounding every round over Miguel Cotto. No, it's a tag. It's a tag. Nice and relaxed. Here's Mayweather mixing it up with Cotto. Talked about the good defense. Look at the elbow walk. Blocks up. that one, blocks it with the shoulder. Cotto does get one through. He's landed 26 of 138 punches. About that 20% mark that Mayweather has been at for his career. Even on the inside, Dave, the replay shows he hangs the left hand low and uses the shoulder to parry off punches. The guy is just extraordinary. You're watching a real, real ring genius.
maybe one of the greatest oh, fighters of all time, Hansford. Floyd Mayweather. Because believe you me, Miguel Cotto is some kind of toughness at the ripper fighting joke. But he just can't do anything with this kid so far. We're in round four at the MGF Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas on the Kermel Bob Show along with Dave Fontepo. Hope that you're enjoying this one wherever you're watching. Miguel trying to do everything he can possibly do with footwork to get Floyd to come in. Well, he can nail him, but Floyd keeps him up. Even though two of them were taken on the gloves and Floyd was taken on the chin. That one was dropped underneath the eye. Floyd just looks like he knows exactly what he's doing. He's in his office right now. He loves this time as he passes the left side of the Miguel Cotto. Here he goes, picking it up again. And all of a sudden, he's turned the crowd around and wanted to be for Cotto. But you have to admire, no matter what you think of the attitude of Floyd Mayweather, no matter what you think of him outside the ring, inside the ring, pure genius. You're looking at a craftsman and a surgeon. Things he does on the defense that we showed you, keeping fighters to 20 percent, toying with you, and he's on the inside. And now he shifts it to offense and he staggers Cotto. Goes upstairs. If they call Frankie Randall when he was champion, the surgeon, he could be doing things like knees, and Floyd Mayweather was a surgeon to be doing the break. That's the difference in the surgeon. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. I got he you. has this instinctive knack of sensing a millimeter of weakness in his opponent and springing into an attack. And that's his cerebral advantage. Has for, has but you know for. something? The oh, other thing is he, he has so much pride that physically he really works, and you can't take that away from the Tremont County. Look at his body as Cotto tries to put pressure on him. He doesn't grab him, he pushes back, bends down, comes with a sneaky uppercut. Even as Cotto touches him a little bit, they're not big shots because he's rolling their shoulders. And he lands the big one. Big one with an uppercut that time. Snaps the head back at Miguel Cotto. I was right in front of us, Dave. And you just watch the genius of this kid. I haven't seen him fight any better. And he toyed with Cotto. He let Cotto land one to get close enough for himself. To stop, stop, I got right you. He's got 15 to 3 edge in power shots this round. Going back about 15 seconds, and he's added to that. And this is utter artistry from the Mediterranean. And he lands another looping right hand shot as the bell ends the fourth round, and it's all Mayweather. Every round, 10 9. I mean, when I said I think this is the best he's ever played, I mean it. He looks if you can read the fighter's face, it's a... Pasa the lado, Mayweather, after blocking a few, looks jab, throws right hand. See? How many fighters could do that? That's a classic jab stance. And he started with the jab, but he turned it into a right hand mid-string. By the time Cotto realized that he's got to hold his chin down because he knew he was going to get hit because he was trying to block the jab. This is round five. This guy does things as subtle as the great Ricardo Lopez, who I thought was the greatest boxer I've ever seen in my life. I'm beginning to think that Floyd Mayweather might be the best I've ever seen now. Is Cotto trying to give it a shot here? He doesn't catch Floyd clean, though. Pushes Floyd back in. Floyd up and down. He doesn't need to stay in here. He can walk down the ropes, but he chooses to. He's tony with the guy. He's not talking with him. He's doing it with his actions. You don't have to do this against the power guy. You can tease a guy with no power to try to sucker him into something. He wants to, Dave. He wants to show this guy what a good fighter. There's no bad blood between these guys leading up to this fight. Uppercuts him inside by Floyd. Oh, he's getting his in here. What do you have to do with this guy? Look at the hand speed of Floyd. Cotto still lands a couple of decent heavy punches. But everything that Floyd's throwing is catching a piece of Miguel Cotto. He's only two big uppercuts there. He just 
Carter to come to him. Blocks the couple. And then scores. And if he could consistently win the inside battle, he would be able to take the heart away from Carter because this is Carter's game. Well, the thing is, the fact of the matter is, Dave, he is winning the inside battle with Carter. And that's Carter's kitchen, as you mentioned, but not tonight. So far. And if you uh, take off the cut right hand, you take that away from Carter, you, you deny that in an emotional way. You know, that's the way I see it right now. Well into the fifth round here with about a minute to go. Carter doing everything he can to land some power shots. Boyd just keeps rolling with him. And he uses that uppercut with the right hand. Upstairs, downstairs, now back with the left. Now he rolls it out there, but making this guy miss with what should be his territory in this corner. But Floyd's the back up against the ropes. And Cotto can't get clean to land his shot or create distance. When he does, it sails over the head of Floyd May with a junior. Now time to get caught. Finally, he landed one, but it doesn't hurt Mayweather because he's in such great shape. And again, I don't know why Mayweather chooses to stay here. But he wants to mix with a guy in his territory. Parker with the couple and loads up his right hand. This guy is so kind of funny. You're watching a genius. 15 seconds to go in the fifth round. When you consider just how good Cotto is, it's even much more significant what Floyd Mayweather is doing right now. I don't know what Patty and Manny Pacquiao is watching right now in the Philippines. He said he wasn't going to watch the fight, but he could be sure he is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 50 45 as we go to the sixth round. Mayweather Jr. winning every round in the fight. In the past round, Mayweather decides to fight on the inside. So Cotto lets him land one, and then watch how he comes back. Boom, the left hand, blocks another one, lines up, gets another one through, one's partially blocked. He's toying with a, a guy who's attacking him. Cotto does land the left hook on him, though. Makes no, the question strategy a little bit. But Mayweather is non-stop action and shows so much. And doesn't get caught for the little thing with the glove though. All right, this is round number six of the MGM Grand Garden Arena. This much anticipated fight with Floyd Mayweather facing incarceration next month for three months. And then this the anticipation of the Pacquiao fight. He doesn't think he needs Manny Pacquiao. The world would love to see it. Cotto got a piece of that jaw that time as he came in. You know, the book on uh, Miguel is plenty of power. That time Floyd didn't get the roll, then finally comes off the ropes. Mayweather in the red trunks. Cotto having the first good 45 seconds that he's had in any round. And just as I say that, Floyd gives by his tap upstairs, tap downstairs, gets him off balance, cracks him with the right hand. Doesn't hurt him, but keeps him off balance. One of the few times in the fight you see them in the center of the ring. A little bit of puffiness below the left eye of Floyd Mayweather Jr. I think for Mayweather, the key thing is to stay outside. He might have tried to prove a point on the inside. Not necessary. He can stay outside with the five-inch reach. Don't give that away. If you're going to toy with the guy, toy with him from outside. Use the reach. Set some traps for Cotto. But you don't have to let him come all the way in and then trade with him and raise his hopes for him. You know, that hook that Floyd had may have taken a little bit out of him because he's got a bloody nose. I assume it's coming from his nose and not from up around his eye. But the chance to up for Cotto because Cotto's having his best minute and a half of any round in the fight trying to put pressure on Floyd. Floyd just grins at him now. Floyd looks like a guy, hey, you're in my office, now I'm going to come back after you. It's like a kid in the, in the street. You don't want to hit a guy because you're afraid of what he might do to you. Well, he's not afraid of what anybody's going to do to him. That's a nice cool save by right hand hand again. I hear him set the trap and he does. You know, Bernard Hopkins is one of the best for setting traps. This kid, I got to say, is equal right to the task with him. Boyd 
in a round that's been a more difficult round for him, still just bringing in there. I still think the court is winning this round, by the way. And if he does continue and does win the round, it'll be the first round he's won in the fight. Sensational offensive and defensive fighter. If he can stand the outside and jab and hook, they were there to make the fight even easier for himself. He doesn't have to try and run it in Cotto's pitcher. Not his nature, Davy Boy. You're absolutely right, but it's not his nature. He cracked Cotto that time. Just before that, he got through the last time. It was caught in the back of the hand of Miguel Cotto. But all this good work in this round is coming from the outside. He can start his power from the outside, too. He can even rumble from the outside by setting things up and utilizing that reach. Oh, for sure. He's so quick on his feet. He throws his jab technically perfectly off that back foot. He has his left shoulder tucked away in. He has such great vision carrying that left hand low because he knows how fast it is. And in that case, Cotto lets some really good hands be built and nothing land. Again, to the well, no water. In this case, that's because the well's a little too far away. With Mayweather doing an excellent job so far in this round in directing his attack. From a spot where he can utilize his reach. Look what he's got going here. All from the outside. The jab and the double left hook downstairs. Now he uses his elbow and his shoulder a little bit to prop up the face of Miguel Cotto and he cracks him with the right hand, another right hand behind the rear. Gotta be frustrating for Miguel. I mean, don't forget, Miguel's one of the very best fighters in the world stop, as well. Stop, stop, stop. And he's, he's just, like, getting a boxing lesson from the master tonight. Looks like that right underneath the right eye of Miguel is about to pop. Very much swollen underneath the right eye. Nobody has been down. The only blood mostly. we've seen is uh, come from the nose of Floyd Mayweather. Nobody really cut the fight. Stop, 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 stop. Cotto tries to plod forward, but it's the hand speed of Mayweather again. Mayweather's going to win this round just by outboxing him from the outside. Watch and see if it happens right at the bell. No, he doesn't throw it that time. That was quintessential Mayweather. It's exactly the kind of round I think he should be putting it together time after time. He'll make Cotto make mistakes from out there. Miguel, que 
Questa è bella, eh. ma un po' di me, questa è qua. C'è una bella. Non corre male, non corre male. Non corre male. Leave it alone. C'è una Mayweather outside, setting everything up. Nice hook gets there. Takes one. That was one of Cotto's rare moments in that round. Colonel Bob Sheridan along with Dave Bon Tempo. This is terrific stuff. Boyd Mayweather Jr. out in front of this fight. We're in the eighth round now. Mayweather, it's been an absolute boxing clinic. Look at this, Mayweather working on the inside, clipping him with shots. Oh, look at the uppercut in there, Dave. I mean, this guy is absolutely sensational tonight. Cole trying to get back, but just can't seem to land a clean shot. Oh, down in the hips this time, trying to push him back. Tony Leach watching to make sure it's clean. Watch out there where the leads back against the ropes to get a little bit of propulsion and then springs forward for the uppercut. He's trying to set up the uppercut here. And he's trusting the shoulder. The fans are going crazy. The stuff is not getting in. Yeah, from afar it looks like Cody's doing a real job. But in reality, that's why it's very difficult when you're sitting in an arena, if you have the first couple rows to realize just how crafty this guy is. Look at this. With all the stuff that Cotto's shot, that one or two uppercuts that Floyd has landed have been bigger punches. Halfway through the round. How about the pace of this punch? Eh? Terrific pace. And they let him see the uppercuts. And, you know, we talked about his percentage. He holds opponents to 20% or less, and Cotto is less than, but it's remarkable because it's not in the keep-away version. He puts his chin at risk all the time. He continually takes fake, but he gets away with it because he's so quick. He's so quick, and he has such confidence in his conditioning that he can take a hit from now and every once in a while. And Cotto just doesn't seem to have the power tonight that he picks up with this guy. Part of that is because he's constantly getting belted. See, Cotto's just not landing clean shots all day. Well, he's showing a lot of quick determination. Here's Mayweather going southpaw for a second. But then when he's playing with Cotto, he breathes a little life into the guy. Doesn't have to do that. Cotto trying to put the pressure on the guy now. Crowd would love to see him drop Mayweather. I don't know. Cotto is just too good. And they say that Cotto comes in and Mayweather hits him like he's hit the speed guard. Now he comes out the rope saying, now you didn't hurt me. I'll watch and see if he opens it up for the last 10 seconds. But you know something, Cotto may have still on this ground. With all the aggressiveness, now we know it wasn't especially effective aggressiveness, but I think the judge is going to give that round to Cotto. And it's a giveaway by Mayweather, especially after what we pointed out in round seven. No need for him to be on the inside. After that great round seven, he had three. And away from the fact the judges gave that last round to Miguel Cotto, and it's a whole different kettle of fish here. He got bloody nose here from Mayweather. Cotto turns it on at the end of the round as Mayweather fights in Cotto's office. Jab getting through that bloody's the nose Let's there. Go. And uh, that plays well at home. Cotto's life. All right. I've got four rounds suffering in the fighters if you give Cotto uh, the uh, sixth and the eighth round. With four rounds to go. 
Now let's see what Cole can stop, do. Stop, can stop, stop. Calm? I got you. Let him go. He seems very confident, too, with his arm hung out over the head of um, Floyd Mayweather. But Floyd Mayweather, his boxing is so sensational. I don't know why he wants to fight on the ropes, but for some reason he does. And, okay, you might score a knockout in there. You may push the guy back to bit, try to beat him in his game. But you also make him think he's got a better shot in this fight. And look at the crowd now into it because of what happened in the last round. In round seven, Mayweather had this photo crowd back on their heels with that virtuoso boxing performance. In round eight, he gave Cotto life in that style, and now Cotto's got some momentum with the crowd as well. This is boxing at its very, very best at the ultimate level. Cotto trying to do everything he can do to grab this round for Floyd Mayweather. Upstairs, he needs to come with the uppercut now. Where is he hiding that? Instead, Floyd Mayweather does with two, three uppercuts. Only one gets through, but as Cotto decided to engage and he came forward. Mayweather steps back with his left foot and cracks him to the left side of the skull with the right hand. I mean, these are things that you learn. These are things that are instinct for a fighter. How often does a guy just walk into a right hand lead like that when he's in nominal pursuit? And Cotto has. And just, you know, when you see him on the inside, you know that Floyd's thinking about everything he's doing. I mean, it's not just automatic. You know, put this guy in close control and let him fight. Cotto trying to keep the pressure on him. But Mayweather, when he gets some room there, huh? I think that's why I think the outside is where he ought to be. Stop, stop, you stop. want to I mix it you, up a little you. bit now and then, but on the outside, He's just flawless and excited. Now he finally implies him and pushes him into the ropes to show some of his power to Skolo. You know, from Polo's perspective with the, you know, the pace that this fight is going, he's going to be thinking he's winning this fight. And the crowd in it like this, because this is another decent round for Miguel Cotto. Almost too close to call is that round. There's the bell ending the ninth round. That one's too close to call for me. I think that the judges will go both ways in that. But I'll put it down on my score sheet as an even round. Well, it's not even round. The judges won't score it even. No, I thought it was a Mayweather run. Three rounds to go. Four, maybe five rounds separating the two fighters in favor of Mayweather. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Vamos a ver. Nobody's been down, nobody's been shaken, bruising around the eyes and cheeks of Miguel Cotto. Blood has come from the nose in the sixth and the eighth round of Floyd Mayweather Jr. We're in round number 10 of the Indian Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Colonel Bob showed me with Dave Von Demo. We just hope wherever you're watching this that you're enjoying it as much as we are. And the crowd in attendance, by the way, has been a buzz the entire fight. Anytime Cotto does anything, they absolutely come alive. Problem is, there's been few and far between because Mayweather is just such a great fighter. Cotto trying to get some pressure, but he can't get a solid shot upstairs. Instead, Floyd, right hand, right hand, uppercut. The great stuff he's been doing in this fight. He's got a package of it. In the first minute of this round, outside, landing the jab, forcing Cotto to come to him, landing right hand leads, dictating the entire pace of the fight. And he can tell him there with the grip that 
Cotto has just doing so bad there before, and he just can't hit him. And he's just missing. He's oh, he's a guy. Right shot. Another fact, he's just barely missing. And that's the skill of the great defense of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, because Cotto's known as a pinpoint puncher. Mayweather showing him some healthy respect in this round with the outside warfare thus far. Now he goes into inside mode again. Oh. But doesn't need to. Floyd making him work, that's for sure. Floyd hanging on, trying to grab a seven seconds maybe if he can. He stop, hang stop, on, stop. trying to get Tony Weeks to come in. <laughs> that gives you the chance to take a step back. Minute to go in the tenth round. Cotto continues to try to apply pressure. Mayweather continues to counter punch him. Caught him with a nice looping right hand that time. Look at how sneaky that jab is. That one came from the hip right into the face of Cotto. We talk about the conditioning of Mayweather. That is such an important factor for him when Cotto comes out. He can spin out, he can move quickly, not get caught in stationary positions for too long. He's chosen to be in those positions here, but he's not driven into a stationary position. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just incredible that he's has taken a couple of rounds off of Cotto, has tried to nail it, but he went into defensive mode of both those rounds and didn't take any heavy shots. Yeah, he took some of the hits in the shoulders. It comes a bell to end the 10th round, and then with another good boxing round to Floyd Mayweather Jr. Championship of the world, the WBC Diamond Belt is going along with it. That's a, a super championship belt that they give out. Boyd Mayweather up on his toes, as is Miguel Cotto. 30 seconds just about gone here, and not much has happened in round number 11. Both guys have got to be showing some sort of fatigue, although they don't look real sloppy. They're both pretty tight in all their movement. Floyd up on his toes, doesn't seem to want to engage. Cotto trying to get to him. I keep thinking of looking in there, the Floyd's trying to wear down the older legs of Cotto, but it's Cotto who has the older legs. And Cotto's trying to come after Floyd, but there's the right hand lead again by Mayweather. Now, when I say the older legs, that's because of all the movement he had to go. There's still a three-age, uh, I got rid of three-year uh, age advantage for Miguel Cotto. So Floyd has chronologically the older uh, legs, but it doesn't make any difference because he can move. You know what I said in the late rounds of that leather with all the wet uh, perspiration and water and everything else? Might bother the legs of Floyd. By the way, folks, you're not bothering his legs. He can get away with it. The great ones can. And he can get away with fighting the other guy's fight, which he's chosen to do a few times in this contest. And yet he bounces off and some uppercuts here on Cole. As Cole lands a combination, but he doesn't hurt. Mayweather again. Mayweather comes back downstairs, go to upstairs. Look at these combination of punches. Cotto tries to keep him in the corner. Floyd is trying to grab a breath right here right now as he hangs on the hands. 
Now watch as soon as he gets room, watch how quick his hands up. Bang, bang. Now he makes Cotto hang on, which is exactly what Floyd wants to do. He's trying to grab a breather right here. But if nobody's better at uh, grabbing a 10 to 15 second breather while looking like he's busier than Floyd Mayweather. That's what the special fighters can do. And here he is again, where he should be. On the outside with the jab in the right hand. Cotto has no answer for this. When Mayweather's outside, he is untouchable. And here he is now, just putting a little explanation for it. Not for the judges' scorecards. We're inside of 15 seconds to go. And this is the 11th and next to final round of the fight. Mayweather gets whacked with the left hand to the side of the head. The bell ends round number 11. It's been all Floyd Mayweather Jr. In order for Cotto to win this fight, you just knock this guy out. And they ain't going to <laughs> I have it on my score sheet. Mayweather 108, Cotto 102, so it would definitely take a knockout for Cotto. And what an upset it still could be. But this guy, Miguel Cotto, who came here, tremendous shape, a tremendous fight. He's almost out of time and almost out of gas. Round number 12, the 12th and final round. And the crowd has really been entertained tonight, in spite of the fact that Mayweather is so far out in front. Meanwhile, stop, stop, they stop, don't stop, know stop. that Mayweather is so far out in front. And so the crowd of far, it looks like, you know, Cotto may have landed heavier blows and may have kept the pressure on the whole fight. But the thing is, in tight where we are, we can see what a great job that uh, Mayweather has done throughout the fight. And through round 11, Mayweather 161 of 628. And Cotto 100 of 478. Punches landed, and again, Cotto right around that 20% mark that Mayweather opponents are stuck with. And that's what it's all about with Floyd. Floyd back downstairs now with a minute almost gone here in the 12th and final round. The champ goes up for Cotto, Cotto, Cotto. And again, the crowd is so enthusiastic because they cannot possibly realize how far out in front in this fight that Mayweather is. Another excellent two-punch combination, the jab in the right hand by Mayweather. So many weapons and they're instinctive for him. Two more of them. We see the right hand lead from the right hand. We see the jab that turns into a right hand on his screen. That's something only the special fighters have. Now this Cotto trying to pick up some last minute and 20 second fury here. Floyd still up on his toes, stops, pops again. Comes out with the Jets, backs away from the power of Miguel Cotto, as he's been able to do a drill. Right hand followed by the left uppercut. Again the uppercut. And now Cotto's right to staggered. Had to hang on for just a second here. Floyd would love to take this guy out in the final round. Boy, he's giving him some boxing lesson here. What a show Floyd Mayweather has put on. My heart goes out to Miguel Cotto because he's worked so hard. Floyd is just totally outclassed. A tremendous classy fighter in Miguel Cotto. 40 seconds to go in the fight now. Both guys trying to get a final win. For the final breeze down the home stretch. Cotto frustrated by the fact he hasn't been able to hurt this guy. With 24 seconds to go in the fight, Floyd just sort of sucking him in, doing what he does so well. He'll plant and try to finish strong here. Blast Miguel Cotto. Almost out of time now. Inside of 10 seconds to go in this fight. They'll battle to the bell. Cotto still tries to be aggressive, but it's not giving me enough. Floyd Mayweather, I believe, has won this WBA Super Welterweight Championship in fine style.
We saw some things tonight that were as vintage Mayweather as anything we have ever seen from him. With the speed, the outside demeanor, the lead right hands, the ability to change on the fly. He puts it all together. A lot of people in Corner's Corner think he's won this fight. His wife thinks he's won it. But I don't think so. Not by a long shot. I haven't scored 118, 111. It's Robert Hoyle, Patricia Morris John, and Dave Moretti will render the final verdict of this one. Patricia Boss, German, and Dave are ready. All three referees from the state of Nevada Athletic Commission. There's Mayweather with the right hand. What a way as he tries to finish this up. Didn't even need the jab there. Scored with the right hand. And you got the sense that if he never wanted to engage in flurries from the outside power shots, he could have scored a knockout tonight. Cotto had a little bit to say here. There's a shot by Cotto that got it. One of the better shots of the fight for Floyd, but Floyd never takes the full brunt of any punch. He was, even in that case, he was, you know, leaning back against the ropes and getting his head back. Look at this, he loads up. Oh, look at the head of uh, Cotto. Give Cotto credit for taking that shot. And look at this sequence. Right hand and the uppercut. Cotto took it and came back for more. Right. Watch the speed. One's it, but not done. Uppercut right behind. Him. That's usually the devastating shot, the second one, when it comes that quick. That's our super, uh, super slow motion. Michael Buffer standing by. We'll have all official predictions. On the LGN Grand, we go to the scorecards. Dave Moretti and Patricia Moss Jarman both have it 117, 111. Robert Hoyle, 118 to 110. All three to the winner by unanimous decision. And no champion and still undefeated. For money. Patricia Morse German had a 117 111, as did Dave Moretti, and we have 118 111. So we gave Mayweather one extra round, someplace along the line there, or at least one extra point. When you're sitting in row 30, a miss looks like a haymaker. Uh, you get that when you're back there and you're not up in front and seeing it's a crowd reaction. A lot of people from the back not seeing what Mayweather was able to do in terms of slipping, sliding, rolling. And punch. Cotto made a great account of himself. He has nothing to hang his head about except the loss. But I mean, he couldn't be any better prepared than he was. It's just that Floyd Mayweather is that great, folks. I mean, because Cotto's a terrific fighter, a wonderful fighter. And now we see what happens. Everyone's waiting for Larry Merchant and Floyd Mayweather. I'm sure Floyd is in much better humor than he is for this fight than he was for the controversial ending that happened. In his last fight over Victor Ortiz by September. As soon as uh, Larry has Floyd, we will go to the interview. But a wonderful, wonderful effort by Miguel Cotto. And again, thank you, Floyd Mayweather. thank you, Jim. And to go. end the suspense, uh, I want to let you all know that Floyd graciously came to me yesterday and apologized for the incident last September. And I want, and I accepted it, and thank you for thank you. doing that very much. Thank you, Larry, thank you. I appreciate it. You haven't been in a battle royal like this for a long time. What was it like? Well, you know, when it's pay-per-view, and the fans are paying, and the fans are coming out to see you, you want to get the fans excitement. Um, I, I don't that want to... hasn't happened before, though. You haven't 
I mean, this is, this, you're, it was, it was you were bloody tonight. Yeah, well, that's about giving the fans excitement. That comes with the territory sometimes. We got to suck it up and fight hard. Miguel Cota was a, was a tough competitor. I knew this wasn't going to be an easy fight. So, you know, I had to go out there and execute the game plan and fight my heart out. You felt your blood. What message does that send to you in a, in a fight? Because we don't often see that. Well, Miguel Cotto is a future Hall of Famer. He's not a pushover. He's tough. He's solid. I fought him at the weight that he wanted to fight at, 154. No catch weight. And um, he's a tough competitor. What else could I say? What did he do that made it such a hard fight and gave you an opportunity to fight hard? Um, he came to fight. He didn't come for survival. He came to fight. So when you come to fight, and you and you and you coming with offense, and you come with and he the battle. Those things happen. So you know I bit down and fought hard like a true champion. But he's a tough competitor. What else can I say? Um, Floyd, there's, you fought under this cloud that um, starting June first, you're going to have to go out of circulation for a while. Put it that way. Yes. <laughs> How have you dealt with that? Um, that comes with the territory, you know? What territory? I mean, things in life, you know, uh, certain obstacles come to, you face with certain obstacles in your life, so the only thing you could do is take the good with the good, you take the bad with the bad, just keep striving. Have you prepared yourself, you've lived the high life for all these years, you're proud of it, <laughs> yeah, yes. and now you're going into, you know, a lonely cell. I, I'm, I'm blessed. What else can I say? I'm blessed, you know? I mean, uh, Mayweather Promotions, the past, the present, and the future of sports and entertainment. And when June 1st come, only thing I can do is accept it like a true man would do. What does this delay do to your schedule? Are you going to fight again in the fall? And if so, what's on the short list? Well, I don't know. You know, um, this fight right here, I was looking to fight Manny Pacquiao. The fight didn't happen because, and, and I don't think the fight was, would happen because of Bob Arum. Bob Arum's in a way, he's stopping the Pacquiao fight. Let's get the fans what they want to see. They want to see May Mayweather and Pacquiao. So are you talking about Fighting Pacquiao in the fall, um, because it looks like Alvarez is not going to fight you. <laughs> According to Oscar De La Hoya, when I asked him before, he doesn't think he's ready for you. And if you can't make Pacquiao, then who's on your list? Who are the guys? Well, I can't, well, I can't say who, who's on my radar. You know, uh, Miguel Cotto is one of the last of the Mohicans. So um, I can't really say who's are, next to Floyd Mayweather. You... But I, wanna, I must say, th I, I want to thank all the fans that came out and flew out to Las Vegas. I got to thank the fans. Everybody that bought pay-per-view, thank you. Floyd Mayweather want to give you nothing but excitement and total battles. One last question. Are you willing to come off what you say is your strong position that you have to get 60% against Pacquiao, especially when you're likely to have a huge pay-per-view numbers tonight? Well, uh, like I said before, I'm, I was I've been trying to make the Pacquiao fight. I mean, Miguel Cotto didn't have a problem with taking a random and blood, you know, the random blood in your test. So why should he? If you're the best, take the test. And let's get the fans what they want to see. Mayweather Pacquiao. Thank you very much, Floyd. Congratulations Thank on you. your victory. All right, uh, interesting line of questioning uh, because I thought that. Uh, you know, uh, Larry was questioning him about how tough the fight was. I thought that Mayweather totally, totally, totally dominated the fight, as did the scoring show. As, as do I. It definitely was what way out in front of this fight. The only time he made it tough on himself was when he chose to make it tough on himself and fight on the inside. That was a choice that was curious in that respect. But Mayweather showed so many exquisite skills tonight, and he was not in trouble from Cotto's doing. Cotto. Yeah, came up and uh, came at him and, and tried to make it a straight ahead charge and give himself some chances, but that didn't happen for him. Well, he's very disappointed. He can't see his face, but believe me, we saw it when he was leaving the uh, ring, and it is really beat up. He gave everything he absolutely had, and this is a case of a fighter going out on his shield. Great fight, champ. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. Great fight. You just hope that nobody uh, tries to put the uh, term controversial on it with the crowd booing and everything like there that. There is no he controversy was, here, Dave. Overdone. He was just out of class here. Now, there he is. Take a look at that face. He goes around. I mean, he's a terrific guy. He says hello to all his fellas in his uh, dressing room. But it was a tough night for him.
Now let's take a close look at him. He says he's all right as the doctor examines him, wants to look at the orbits around his eyes. First, they make sure there's no breaks around the cheeks. Checks his hands out. All right, the formalities with the Nevada State. Uh, his mother is in there and wants to give her son a little uh, kiss to congratulate him for such a hard fight, but he appears to be fine. He's just popped up and he's been in a brutal fight, so you wonder what's ahead for Miguel Cotto. <laughs> he throws the kiss to mom. Here comes mom. He says, I love you. I love you, son. This is mommy. Well, it's kind of a sad thing to see when you know what a great fighter is. On the other hand, uh, they say there's no dignity in defeat. He got plenty of dignity in defeat tonight because he carried himself so well. But this guy, just absolutely sensational, is Floyd Mayweather. Well, now the three-month hiatus, and that can do strange things. Other fighters have done the time and come back have done well. Others haven't. So we'll see. At least he's got a short stretch of time before he could be back in.